What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we are going to be going over taunts in our fighting game tutorial series. So taunts are a fun little mechanic that a lot of games have that allow you to do multiple things. So one, the fact that you can taunt your opponent could be used as a genuine aggressor, get them to try and attack you, or to try and honestly just insult them. But it can also be used as a gameplay mechanic to do things like fill up your super meter, and uh, sometimes restore health. It can even be used at certain times to perform an attack. Like you can cancel out of a taunt to perform an action. So what we're gonna be able to do today is press either um, one button or two buttons, you know, whatever you wanna do, and perform a taunt. If you successfully perform the taunt, you gain super meter. However, if your taunt gets canceled, then you return to idle. You only get the damage. You, you saw that I got super meter there, but that super meter that I got was only from the damage that I received from the enemy. Okay, I normally receive receive some meter gain from that little bit of damage, but I did not actually get the full 50% from the taunt itself. And I keep pressing the wrong button, so I apologize. I keep doing the wrong move. There we go. So. That's what we're going to be covering today. Very simple episode, very fun episode, but you know what that means when we have a fun episode. It means we're going to have a big episode next week, so get ready for that. Just take it easy. We're going to enjoy taunts. Now, before we get started, if you'd like to check out how we got to this point, all 118 episodes, as well as some additional episodes that are just general episodes, then you can click this playlist right here. It's in the top right corner, and basically this will have every episode related to the fighting game tutorial to date and in the future. So anything that you're seeing in that playlist is going to be current, no matter when you click on it. If you click on it and we're 200 episodes in front of this one, then you'll be able to see them all in that playlist. I'll also link this episode right here, which is where we go over some of our input buffer logic uh, this is where we have our commands, and it's what we're going to be using today to perform our taunt. However, it's not required if you have your own setup working. You should be able to translate it pretty easily to make these taunts work in your game. Alright, and with no more delay, let's get started. So, it's going to be pretty simple today. We need to go into our character that we want to add a taunt to. Alternatively, you can do this on your base character because probably if you have a taunt on one of your characters, all your characters will have at least one taunt. You can also have multiple taunts on a single character. I'm going to add a new character command for this. I'm going to uh, add one by pressing plus here in my character commands array. And then I'm going to go through and define all the features about this taunt. So for one, I'm performing this taunt by performing two special buttons at the same time. The medium attack button and the special attack button. Again, not required that you do that. You could have a button that is specifically made to perform taunts. You could have a different command to use to perform taunts. So I just chose some random values here so I could test it out. So I have a medium attack hold and a special attack hold, meaning that I have to have these both pressed at the same time. And I have to be in the idle state. I gave myself 30 frames in between because again I'm not actually trying to play competitively here. I'm just trying to develop my game so I want to make it easier for me. We can modify this when we get into the game design section. Everything else is the default because I don't care about charging my taunt or anything like that. Once you have this taunt you probably know what we're going to do next but in our animation blueprint we need to set up some logic to be able to go to this animation. So you saw in-game, but here is my taunt animation. Once you have an animation in your game for your taunt, you can add an anim notified to this. And this is going to be where we gain our health or our, our super meter or whatever it is that we're actually receiving from this taunt, assuming you receive something. You don't always receive something in games for taunting. So, you know. It's not necessarily the case that you will, but if you're going to have some sort of benefit given to the player or anything really reacting to this taunt, then you're going to want Anim Notify to determine where you want to do it in the animation. Now, if you want the taunt to have to be fully completed and return to idle before the reward is received, then this can happen by simply on the transition back from the taunt state back to idle. You could do this. So instead of having end attack here, 
and we'll cover this in a second. Instead of having the transition event I have here, you could have a custom one that does that logic. However, I wanted to give like a forgiveness zone or forgiveness area. So if we've reached this part of the taunt, where we've essentially done the taunt, okay? So if we look at this, we pound the chest, and he starts pulling his hand back to go back to the idle state. At this point, I'm saying give the guy the super meter. Even if he gets punished at this point for the taunt, he might as well get his meter gain. And so I've intentionally put this a, a few frames from the end. Okay, this is also a pretty long taunt. Most taunts in fighting games probably aren't this long, but just an example. You could also speed it up if you'd like. So I've given it a little bit of like a forgiveness area. If you get canceled out at this point, it's fine. You can still go and uh, get your meter, even though you haven't technically completed the entire animation. But in our AnimBP, it's quite simple. I've added a new state. Right click, add state. I've called it taunt. I've plugged in my taunt animation, made sure I don't loop it. And then as for the rules that we have, I can only go there from idle now, so that's the only one I've drawn a line from anyway. But from idle to taunt, all I have to do to go into this state is to check and make sure I've used the correct command. A lot of you are probably familiar with this, especially if you've been following the series. However, I'll go ahead and explain it. We have a character reference that we set up a long time ago that links to the owner of this animation blueprint. So basically, the character that is this mutant here. They have the character commands array, which is where we added the taunt command to. And you can see the index of each command here. So we have index 21 is our taunt command. Each command has a has used command boolean that gets set once its values are found matching with what is in the player's input buffer. So saying this character or this player has performed this command. So we want to set this to true. So basically we're checking this is the taunt command, and then we're checking and seeing if it has been used. Quick reminder, when you break off of your command, you will have all these variables that are, you know, anything that's in the command, anything that's in your structure. You can hide unconnected pins and choose which ones you want. This is what I did so that I can only see the has used command, which makes this transition rule a lot neater. Okay. Now, to return from taunt to idle, I just make automatic rule based on sequence player end state. Meaning, once this animation is complete, if it has no other transitions to take, it is going to automatically take this. So as soon as the taunt is done, it's going to return to idle. Now, on each of these, I have our standard event or transition events. So for all of my commands, say uh, idle to fireball idle to, you know, let's do like my different projectiles to some of my other commands to my standard attacks like idle to medium. You get the point. They all have this start attack transition and the returns back to idle. If I take a look at them, all have this end attack transition. We've been over them before, but basically what they do is they set the attack states appropriately and they determine if we can move or not and a bunch of other stuff. We've covered that in many, many episodes, so I won't really go over it, but if you do want to see what they look like, I'll go ahead and pull them up for you. So here's end attack, here's start attack. Just a quick reminder. That's what we got going on there. Okay. So make sure idle to taunt has start attack transition, taunt to idle has end attack transition. And there's another thing I want to cover here. I actually want to be able to cancel the taunt, as you saw, that way I don't automatically get the meter. I know I haven't set up all my transition rules because I can't go from quite a few transitions to the other. For example, none of my attacks can actually go to hit reaction. So I can't really cancel out of any of my attacks into the hit reaction. So if I get hit while I'm performing an attack, I still follow through and hit the opponent as well. But there's actually a very simple method to do this if you don't mind dirtying up your NMBP. It's going to have to be done eventually. However, spoiler alert, we will be covering a lot of our animation blueprint stuff in code in the future. Pretty soon, actually. 
So you don't have to go too in depth. Just take a look and check out what we're about to do here. So we have taunt to hit reaction. All right. Now, previously we only had idle to hit reaction and it was all this stuff in here. Basically it determines what type of stun it is and it goes into the hit reaction state. The hit reaction state actually has a few different hit reactions, uh, different animations that can be performed based on the type of hitbox that collided with them. If it was high, mid or low, often known as high, low or overhead. Well, I wanted those same rules to apply to this taunt here. So what I did is I made this a shared transition. And so I clicked, if you click on one that's empty, you can hit promote to shared. It'll ask you to type in the name. I called it enter hit reaction. After I pulled off my taunt animation into the hit reaction state, I went ahead and selected the enter hit reaction transition rule as the shared rule. That way all the same rules apply to that hit reaction. Okay, so now we can go from taunt to idle or taunt to hit reaction if we get hit while we're in the taunt. One final thing we should cover here with the logic in the returning to idle as well is this. So if you click on your idle state or really any of your states in your NMBP, you can set some events that can be called. Uh, they don't have to be from transitions. You can see it's anytime the state Anytime we leave from this state, anytime we fully blend into it, or whenever we enter it. So it doesn't matter what state we come from or are going to, we can still trigger events. I had an event on here called Can Move, and this was used to make sure that we always resumed being able to walk around freely after we return to idle. However, I'm going to change the name now to return to idle because we're going to actually use this. Okay, we're going to actually use this event for more than just setting can move to true. So if you go ahead and change that, you can go back into your event graph. And let's go to the can move section. Here's my can move and I'm notify. Since I changed the name, I do have to actually change the event because that will never fire again. So it is now called return to idle for me. And we want the event and I'm notify. Now, this is what we were doing before. We had character reference and we were setting can move to be true. Very simple. However, there's something else we want to do now and we want to reset our attack state. This is because when we get canceled, say we're in an attack and we get hit and we want to return, we want to go the hit reaction, return to idle. We were never actually resetting our attack state at that point. Because of that, we were never able to actually attack again if we got canceled out of some move that we were doing and didn't go through the proper events. So a simple way to do this is anytime we return to the actual idle state, even if it's just for one frame, we know that the player can move and act normally during that frame. So we want to reset their attack state. There's other ways to do this as well. Other ways we've even shown off in the series, but I think this will work for now because this will show the simplest way to do it, where we just basically reset these two variables so the player has full control over their actions again. All right, and that pretty much covers our state machine logic, but there is one other thing I want to go over, and that's the actual taunt benefits, like we talked about gaining meter for something like our super when we successfully performed a taunt. So as I mentioned before, there's an anim notify set up in here. If you go into your event graph, you can actually just type in this anim notify. So I called it successful taunt. If I enter that, I will then get this event that I can pull off and do things with. What I want to do is when this event fires, we want to call something to actually give our character the benefits that they have. Now, I've called it successful taunt because this is generic and it can work for any character. We're going to put this function on our base character. So different characters can have different benefits that they receive from taunting. So some characters might get some of their uh, potential health loss back. Some characters might get a little boost of health, or they might get some meter gain for their super meter. You could do a lot of stuff with this. But if you go into your fighter template character.h code class, we're going to scroll down. And wherever you want to put your function, make a new function. Again, I've called it successful taunts. This is the new function that we're going to make. 
So the comment, as it says, provide the character with the rewards of completing a taunt or reaching the forgiveness zone in the taunts animation. And that's why I was telling you I was putting it a few frames back from the end of the animation. So we want to make sure this is blueprint callable for sure, because we're actually calling it from the animation blueprint in this case. Then here's our actual function. So I called it successful taunt. And I have a parameter here that is meter gain. You can see I'm setting it to 0.5 F. So 0.5 float by default, meaning that if we don't pass anything, this will be the default value that we give it. It's not required that you do this. I just think it's a good value, especially for a long taunt like that. The player should feel rewarded. So I went ahead and did this, but you customize it to your liking. Then in the CPP, make sure you make this function. Okay, so here it is. And this is all I do for this function. Basically, I add, I take our super meter amount, I add the meter gain that gets passed into the function, and I do a clamp on it. You haven't seen me do this before, but some of you have mentioned it in the comments. So a clamp will determine the minimum and maximum value, something, you know, a variable or some object can it has to stay between. So the way fmath colon colon clamp works here is we're actually taking this amount here, this first value, super meter plus equals meter gain, the result of this, and we're fitting it between 0.0f and 1.0f. So if it automatically falls on a value between these two, then nothing is needed to happen. However, if it fell below zero, it would say, oh, it's equal to zero. If it went above 1.0, it would say, nope, it's 1.0. And this is similar to how we did take damage and how we were checking if super meter amount is greater than 1.0, it's equal to 1.0. This is exactly the same thing, just written differently. This is the actual clamp function that Unreal, well, C++ really provides and Unreal is utilizing here. Now, in your Anim Notify, you can grab your character reference, which again is the owner of the animation blueprint, and we can call the successful taunt function now. I haven't changed the value. I left the default value in there, but feel free to change it. And now, once you reach this Anim Notify, you'll gain super meter or do whatever it is that you coded it to do. So you can go and play your game, and you'll be able to taunt with both characters, both players, player one and player two without any issues. Now you'll have to bear with me for a second as I try and remember the keys for player two. I know the light attack, but I have to figure out the rest. There's that. There we go. Now if I want, oh, press the wrong button there. Hold on, I gotta try and do it at the same time. It should be these right here. There we go. And now we can taunt with both our characters. And anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. And I really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys for everything that you've done. I'm really grateful. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It's completely free. I'll be happy to help you out. Like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.